Hi, the SI Meteorologist. Paul Dorian here on Wednesday, April 30th. The month of May begins tomorrow, and it is time once again to take a look at the tropical season outlook for the Atlantic Basin. We'll also take a look at the Mid-Atlantic Summertime Outlook over the next several minutes. Uh, we'll focus in on several factors that could play pivotal roles in the tropical and Mid-Atlantic Summertime Outlooks one of which will be an unfolding El Nino pattern in the tropical Pacific. El Nino is a naturally occurring oscillation in the sea surface temperatures in the tropical part of the Pacific Ocean. El Nino represents warmer than normal sea surface temperatures and this is quite a change from what we've experienced over the past two or three years. We've had La Nina conditions in the tropical Pacific over the uh, primarily over the last three years or so with colder than normal temperatures but that has changed and looks like El Nino will unfold over the next couple of weeks to a couple of months and we'll have El Nino conditions over the summertime. That is important even though it's a Pacific phenomenon it has been found that El Nino has a big impact on the tropical Atlantic season specifically higher upper level winds are seen often in the Atlantic basin during El Nino summers and that increased vertical wind shear tends to have an inhibiting effect on tropical waves that form in the tropical part of the Atlantic Ocean so an El Nino is crucial to follow uh, even with respect to Atlantic tropical season. Well let's start off here by looking at the sea surface temperature anomalies based on the last four weeks this is from the end of March to just about now the end of April and there's three areas of interest I really want to focus in on the first area is this right here in the tropical part of the Pacific Ocean this is the equator this black line here is the zero degree latitude line right here representing the equator and notice a sliver of above normal sea surface temperatures already in the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean. All the oranges and reds here represent above normal sea surface temperatures and the blues represent below normal sea surface temperatures. Already a sliver of above normal sea surface temperatures in the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean. This is the west coast of South America right here. So we are already starting to see the development of an El Nino. A couple other reasons why El Nino is predicted. One, sea surface temperatures just below the surface are uh, also above normal, kind of indicating the, the uh, potential for an El Nino. And this particular area over the last several weeks have, uh, have, uh, has seen increased in temperatures relative to normal much more than the surrounding areas. So there are reasons to believe that El Nino will in fact form over the next few months and that will play a pivotal role in the Atlantic tropical season. Two other areas of interest with respect to sea surface temperatures. One, right off the west coast of Africa, which is right here, we see this area of blues. This is colder than normal temperatures, sea surface temperatures, off of the western African coast. This is crucial because colder than normal sea surface temperatures tend to have an inhibiting role uh, in the formation of tropical storms. And this is the breeding ground for those African wave type tropical systems that uh, tend to push off from the east to the west off the African west coast especially in the first half of the tropical season June, July and the first half of August so these colder than normal sea surface temperatures will in fact play an important role probably limiting the number of African waves uh, in the first half of the tropical season. Now a third area of interest in addition to the tropical Pacific and just off the western Africa coast off the US East Coast and over the Gulf of Mexico into the northwestern Caribbean notice a large area of above normal sea surface temperatures this indicates the possibility that the US will be vulnerable to some late season hits typically during the second half of the tropical season latter part of August, September and October we have more homegrown type tropical storms that develop much closer to the US coastline rather than forming off the uh, western African coast and taking that long trek across the Atlantic Ocean we have uh, a kind of a uh, dominant uh, homegrown type pattern in the second half of the tropical season so with the warmer than normal temperatures off the US East Coast and over the Gulf of Mexico we can expect the US to be vulnerable to some late season tropical hits 
despite the fact that overall numbers may be down given the El Nino here and the colder than normal temperatures off the western Africa coast. So really kind of an interesting dichotomy of temperatures here over the Atlantic Ocean that will have to be monitored over the next several weeks. Well, we already gave a couple reasons as to why uh, it is believed that El Nino will form over the next few weeks. One, the warmer than normal temperatures below the surface, and two, the increase relative to normal in temperatures at the equator uh, right now in the tropical Pacific. Well, a third reason why to believe El Nino will form is that almost all of the computer forecast models that predict El Ninos or La Ninas do indicate the development of an El Nino over the summertime. This is from the International Research Institute website provided by the Columbia University. And this particular line right here that cuts across represents neutral conditions. La Nina, which is where we stand right now, right in this region right now, this is based on a uh, running three-month average. So we're still showing up as La Nina conditions here. but. Virtually all of these models uh, produce El Nino by the time the summer rolls around. And this is the June, July, August time frame right here, all above this neutral line. So this is an El Nino type of pattern predicted by all of these models. And these models range from statistical models, which, as the name implies, rely on a statistical-based algorithm, or dynamical models, which rely on physics and statistics, as well as current conditions out there. So virtually all of these models produce an El Nino. Now I do not believe this will develop into a super El Nino. Super El Nino can typically be defined as 2.0 or higher on this particular scale right here. In fact, I posted a blog and uh, a video on the climate info section of the weather website discussing some reasons why I do not believe this will develop into a super El Nino. In fact, even these models tend to uh, have it start to weaken by the time the winter time approaches. Nevertheless, a weak to moderate El Nino can play a pivotal role in the tropical Atlantic season. As we discussed earlier, vertical wind shear is often higher during El Nino summers in the tropical Atlantic region, and that tends to inhibit the formation of tropical storms. Well, we can actually take a look at what's been going on in the tropical Atlantic with respect to vertical wind shear. Now, vertical wind shear is uh, simply defined as a change of wind speed and wind direction with altitude. And with high vertical wind shear in the tropical Atlantic, it tends to rip apart any developing tropical storm. So it certainly ad acts as an inhibiting factor in the tropical uh, form storm formation. Now we have the actual magnitudes of the vertical wind shear over the past 11 days, the latter part of the month of April. But what I really want to focus in on is the uh, difference with respect to normal, the anomalous vertical wind shear here in the tropical Atlantic. Now blues here are higher than normal vertical wind shear. And notice already, and this is just with the newly developing El Nino, we can see lots of blues from the west coast of Africa, which is right here all the way across the Caribbean and into the Gulf of Mexico right here all this blue area right in this region right here and this is a very crucial area for the development of tropical storms is already above normal in terms of vertical wind shear and I believe this area will strengthen and expand over the next few weeks as in fact El Nino gets underway and starts to strengthen itself in the equatorial part of the Pacific Ocean. So we're already seeing some signs of an increase in vertical wind shear relative to normal. And again, that acts as an inhibiting factor in the formation of tropical storms in the deep tropical Atlantic waters. Well, let's now shift gears from the tropical Atlantic outlook to the mid-Atlantic summertime outlook. And one of the things I wanted to do was to take a look at some uh, analog type years going back 50 or 60 years to see uh, what years featured a La Nina in the tropical Pacific during the winter and spring, followed by an El Nino in the summer, because that looks like that's what's going to happen this particular year. And these are the years where we had that type of pattern with a La Nina in the winter into the spring, 
followed by a summertime El Nino. And this is the temperature anomaly pattern for those particular years. Now the blues in this map represent cooler than normal temperatures and the yellows and reds and oranges warmer than normal temperatures. And notice in the I-95 corridor from New York City to Philadelphia, D.C., right in this region, anywhere from near normal to cooler than normal in these particular types of years where we had La Nina early in the year followed by El Nino by the summertime. So certainly a, a tendency to be normal to slightly cooler than normal with respect to temperatures in these analog years. Now what about precipitation? Well here is the precipitation anomaly chart for those same years with La Nina early in the year followed by El Nino and basically a little bit above, a little bit of below, but basically near normal in the I-95 corridor with respect to precipitation amounts. The whites represent normal or very close to normal and basically some uh, 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 straddling of the near normal in the I-95 corridor with respect to precipitation in these analog years. Well, one other interesting factor that can very well play a role in our summertime uh, weather pattern here in the Mid-Atlantic region has to do with the Great Lakes. And we've heard over the past several months the unbelievable amount of ice uh, on the Great Lakes throughout the winter. And even now, there still remains some ice on some of the Great Lakes. And I wanted to take a look at some analog years in other years where we had above normal ice cover and ice cover on the Great Lakes well into the spring season. These are some of those years where basically it was a very cold winter uh, in, in these particular years, like 1978 into 79, 93 into 94, 77, 78, 76, 77, and 95, 96. All of these years had a lot of ice on the Great Lakes above normal, well into the spring season like we have this year. And this is the temperature anomaly pattern for those particular years. Again, a tendency to be slightly cooler than normal, anywhere from near normal to slightly cooler than normal in the I-95 corridor. So this is a completely independent of that other factor with a La Nina followed by El Nino um, that suggests it will not be a hot and dry summer here in the Mid-Atlantic region. If anything, there's a slight tendency to be on the cooler than normal side here in the Mid-Atlantic region. Now, it's not the ice cover itself that could keep us cooler than normal this summer. It's the, the overall weather pattern that produced the ice in the first place and made the Great Lakes very chilly during the winter and spring and even into the northeast. That same overall pattern has kept us for the most part below normal. So it's the pattern that created the ice that often leads to a normal to uh, cooler than normal summertime here in the Mid-Atlantic region. Well, let's try to summarize everything we've talked about over the last several minutes. We discussed many of the factors involved with the uh, tropical outlook as well as the Mid-Atlantic summertime outlook. Uh, led by an uh, unfolding El Nino pattern in the tropical Pacific. Overall, I believe the number of tropical storms will be below normal this year, but given those higher than normal, warmer than normal sea surface temperatures off the east coast and over the Gulf of Mexico, the U.S. impact may still be high, especially vulnerable will be the second half of the tropical season, second half of August, September and October. That's uh, typically when you get these homegrown type storms. So even though overall numbers may be down, the uh, U.S. impact could still be high, especially during the second half of the tropical season. In terms of the number of named tropical storms, 8 to 10 with 3 to 5 reaching hurricane status. These are slightly below normal uh, numbers, again, based on the development of an El Nino and those colder than normal uh, temperatures off the west coast of Africa. Those colder than normal temperatures in the eastern Atlantic should result in fewer than normal African wave type storms during the first half of the tropical season, June, July, first half of August. But the warmer than normal sea surface temperatures near the U.S. east coast and Gulf of Mexico coast could very well lead to a higher than normal number of homegrown type storms during the second half of the tropical season that uh, could very well leave the U.S. East Coast and Gulf of Mexico coast quite vulnerable later in August, September, and October. 
El Nino, big factor. Also, as we've just discussed, those Atlantic sea surface temperatures, the uh, colder than normal off of Africa and warmer than normal off the U.S. East Coast. Now, in terms of the Mid-Atlantic summertime, one thing is certain, it does not look like it'll be a hot and dry summer in the Mid-Atlantic region. Basically, the uh, indications are near normal in terms of precipitation, normal to perhaps slightly cooler than normal with respect to temperatures. El Nino does play a role even in the Mid-Atlantic summertime situation, and we saw some analog years with uh, La Nina in the uh, winter and spring, followed by El Nino in the summer, typically leads to normal to below normal temperatures in the northeast U.S. And those years with Great Lakes ice cover anomaly that's well above normal, such as this particular year, tended to have cooler than normal summers or perhaps near normal summers in the uh, Mid-Atlantic I-95 corridor. One final factor we haven't discussed yet at all, soil moisture in the Mid-Atlantic region is certainly at high levels right now uh, for a couple of reasons. The extensive and long uh, term snowpack we had this winter way above normal throughout the Mid-Atlantic region combined with very decent springtime rainfall is uh, keeping the soil moisture content quite high Typically, with high soil moisture content, uh, you just do not get long-term droughts or heat waves in the summertime. So this is a summary of the tropical Atlantic outlook and the mid-Atlantic summertime outlook. We'll, of course, monitor all of this over the weeks and months to come here at the SIWeather.com. That's it for now. I'm the SI meteorologist, Paul Dorian.